One, two, one, two, one, two. Can everyone hear me? I don't know. I can't tell. All right. Awesome. Um, I'm here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say I've not had breakfast yet this morning, and this is why. Uh, <laughs> I remember, in fact, this is very interesting. I remember um, when this was served to me this one morning. Uh, I was here in December in 2016, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and my brother and I, who was here, who ironically works at Apple, where is Bruce? <laughs> um, we looked at each other like, and I remember eating, I think, or well, whatever I ate, the toast, the mushrooms, and something else, maybe part of the egg, and we walked away. And I felt so bad because I wanted to return the food and be like, I didn't really think this was breakfast, bacon, and egg stuff. And, uh, and uh, you know, I won't get into the comments, but this is something that I always remember about coming here. And in fact, after I left the, uh, wherever I was, the diner, I actually came here. That's how I remember. I was like, wait, I've been here before. And I just had flashbacks of this breakfast. <laughs> and uh, so I just threw that in my slides. Anyhow, <laughs> I just had to say that. Um, good morning, Dom. Good morning, everyone here. Um, first of all, uh, I'm so delighted to be back in London. It's been a minute. I have a quick story. Um, I took the red eye. I hadn't taken a red eye in a little while. Uh, and I landed yesterday morning. And I remember I was like, oh, man, I'm so tired, whatever. And I walked through, like, everywhere I was supposed to go. Like, hey, this is the European line. This is non-European line or whatever it is. So I was like, fine. And I scanned my passport. I just I got my photo taken, whatever. And I walked out. And I just followed everyone. And I followed everyone. And suddenly I was at the lift. And I was like, where's immigration? Like. Am I not supposed to speak to someone right now? And I felt so weird. I actually walked back, and I was like, where's immigration? Called my brother. I was like, dude, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm just walking out here, and I haven't spoken to immigration yet. And am I doing something wrong? And he's like, dude, just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I kept walking. And, and I kept thinking about it the whole time. And I know what they do. Uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, say, see something, say something? All right. So basically, nothing to see here, folks. Um, you know, if you're feeling up, like, do not call Interpol uh, or, or Scotland Yard, whatever it is that goes on here. Um, I'm going to be out of your hair in a hot minute. I'm on my way to Amsterdam anyways. So that being said, um, thank you. Thank you, State of the Browser. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chris. Um, Basically, what happened, I knew I was on my way here, and I pitched a lightning talk. And um, David was like, dude, are you coming here for real? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the area, whatever. He's like, dude, we'll give you a slot. So uh, I was super, super thankful. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, I love presenting. I love having fun with the community. And once again, merci bien. Um, so yeah, I'm here to celebrate 10 fantastic um, editions of State of the Browser. Um, I do organize as well, and I know what it's like to you know, pull people together, get a room. Um, you said it was like a 13,000 pound budget, or pounds, is that? Pounds. Yeah, pounds, right. Um, and you, know, you, you need some more money to, uh, to make up the difference. Uh, I'm glad I could help. Bad joke. Um, anyhow, I'm here to talk about sustainability. Uh, and this is something that sort of like came to mind more recently, uh, and I'll get into that in a hot minute. Um, but I remember, you know, after sort of like doing a little bit of research, and you know, if you look up su sustainability, this is what you're gonna see in a basic dictionary. Uh, avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. Sorry, I keep stepping on this thing here, I'm sorry. Um, but as I was poking around, and I'll get into the details in a hot minute, um, you know, there was a, a definition by uh, the Brunt, Brundtland Commission, which is a uh, sort of like sub-organization of the UN. And they said, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And I felt like that was certainly something that kind of like resonated with me a little bit more. But I know everyone's here talking about like, Anki, I, I, I thought you were into 
web performance? Well, I certainly am. Um, and I realized eventually that, you know, things, there were some parallels being um, sort of exhibited. Um, and I'll get into that in a hot minute. But things really got interesting uh, to me anyways, because uh, in 2012, there was a doc, uh, a little study that was released that I got my hands on because I was like a voracious reader. And uh, it was called, Who Killed My Battery? Analyzing Mobile Browser Energy Consumption. You remember that one, right? Yeah. And um, it was really fascinating to me because they were talking about how resources were taxing mobile devices, eating up the battery. And that this one part uh, in the, the study that said the very following, the following, despite the growing popularity of mobile web browsing, this is 2012, the energy consumed by phone browser while surfing the web is poorly understood. And this is something that sort of, again, resonated because uh, in performance, we talk about all the little things that we kind of know, but there was a lot that we didn't know. And this is, again, 2012, we're still discovering, you know, what, you know, the, the experience is like on a device with all um, that we're using. Now, fast forward 10 years to this year, I guess, yes. And I essentially was able to, I'm a meetup organizer as well, um, and I was able to organize this meetup that was about web performance and sustainability. Um, three fantastic guests, uh, one of which is here today. Where is she, Michelle? Put your hand up. Is she here? Ah, there we go at the back. Shout outs. Um, she was one of my guests. Um, and I learned a lot uh, about the parallels uh, between web performance and sustainability. And essentially, they are not so distant cousins. And this was a f like an incredible, really, discovery because at the time, again, I'd sort of poked around, but I was really introduced to a lot of the, uh, I'd even say like the parallels between the two. Because in fact, you know, our reliance on the internet, um, you know, we're using a lot of data centers and um, they are creating emissions. And in fact, um, these data centers are very much, uh, they do have a hand in some of these emissions and these emissions in particular, um, one of them anyways, methane, uh, nitrous oxide, and as well as um, carbon dioxide. So I'd like, to introdu uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to something that I'm calling uh, in commission to no emissions. Um, we basically have to make sure that we are um, as disciplined as possible. I'm stepping into like out the shadows, so I have to apologize if you can't see me. Um, I'm all in black double entendre and um, yeah <laughs> and um, we're gonna have a discussion around missions uh, around best practices um, because as developers we do have a hand in what we put out there so finally let's talk about this known plume uh, my name is Henri my last name is not Helvetica uh, but I just thought I know in case you didn't know right um, but um, you can find me on the interwebs at that handle. I, I work at the venerable uh, web page test. Uh, we talk about, we work in, we love web performance. Um, if you've not used web page test before, we can get into that a little later. If you come see me, I'll tell you about the greatest tool on the planet. <laughs> but you can find us also at real web page test on Twitter. Uh, I'm in charge sort of you know, hanging out with developers, speaking to developers, what we're calling uh, the developer community, because I think that, uh, I mean, there's a lot that we can learn from each other. Uh, and again, you know, I like to kind of see and hear what developers are working on. And I'm in the greatest city on the planet, which is Toronto, Canada, not Toronto, Kansas, if in case you've been there before. Uh, but if you ever come down to Toronto, definitely give me a ring or a ping and, um, We'll hang out and you can spend uh, some of that great money you make uh, on Toronto, I mean Canada, Canadian pricing. So, you know, that's what we call BOGO. Anyhow, we have been on the internet since 1991. That's when the first web page went up. Uh, it's been a while. 
you know, we've had uh, the pleasure of, of just working on the net and doing fantastic things on the internet. But let's talk about 2016. And, you know, if you go back and remember what happened in 2016, 2016, you're like, I don't know. Well, Brexit happened. Mmm. Um, Trump happened. Mmm. The real games happened. I'm a runner, so I was super excited about that. But one of the big things that took place in 2016 is the following. Mobile and tablet internet usage exceeds desktop for the first time worldwide. Now think about that for a hot second. That was the moment where the usage of mobile just ticked up so that desktop was now number two. And if you really think about that, we are not going back. We haven't turned back, that's the bottom line. Um, you're not gonna pick up a desktop and walk around it, uh, walk around with it in your knapsack, at least I don't believe so. Um, and in fact, this is some data, I mean, I'm, I have it sort of like spread out through this talk um, from the HP archive, the Web Almanac that just came out. In 2022, 88% of the top 1,000 most popular sites received more traffic from mobile devices than, than desktop. That makes sense. Um, in general, 58% of web traffic in 2022 is from mobile devices, and this is like the bigger picture. And again, that absolutely makes sense as well. But what we do have to realize is we are constantly connected. We are getting our notifications, uh, messages from our friends, they're sharing, you know, GIFs with us. Soft G, folks, it's a soft G. <laughs> I just, I just, it's a soft G. No argument here, man. Grammar, grammar. <laughs> Shout out Steve Wilhite, rest in peace. Uh, but we are absolutely constantly connected. And, you know, data centers, as such, are working overtime. Um, you know, they have uptime that would sort of make Viagra blush. <laughs> oh, I know it's a bad one. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to hang with Bruce here. <laughs> um, but let's look at some of this electricity use. And this is 2011 to 2019, Google data centers. Um, in eight years, their electricity use is up 476%. And this was 2019. Who knows what it's like now? It's probably like a lot crazier. And in fact, um, there's a lot of um, discussions about, you know, data center uh, electricity use and the CO2 emissions and how, you know, they're rivaling or eclipsing what's happening uh, from the airline industry. And this is something, you know, the numbers sort of vary in terms of like, you know, how it's calculated, what not, but for the most part, this sort of stands true, you know. So um, em emissions from data centers are anywhere from two and a half to four percent, roughly, but uh, we see what's happening with the airline industry. Um, I was a little embarrassed to see that um, rice cultivation is up there. And I hate to say it, but I'm not gonna stop eating rice. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I'm Caribbean, let's go. I mean, I could have it for breakfast, which I do, in fact. But ultimately, calculating emissions is very hard because, you know, we have to factor in device use. You know, they're plugged. We use them all the time. All your Apple Watch users who have your phone, I mean, your watch plugged 24-7 because that battery goes nowhere. <laughs> Network use, also very important in the... Um, <coughs> equation, 2G, 3G, 4G, all varying in their electricity um, use. Data centers, we just talked about that, and hardware production, there's not much that we can do specifically, but that is certainly playing a part in the emissions that we're seeing. But we're gonna look and talk about data, and specifically we're gonna look at data about the data, all right? so. We are talking about Netscape earlier, or at least Bruce was. Uh, in 1995, they introduced the image tag. So that was like the beginning of experimentation there with images online at the very least. Um, in 1996, we got JavaScript, also introduced actually by some good people at Netscape at the time. And in 2022, we basically got a headache. 
because they're both creating some challenges for us online. Don't get me wrong, you know, I think what we've done in all these years on the internet is a bit of a hack. You know, the internet was there to sort of like, you know, help us trade text documents, you know, but the fact that I was able to book my flight on the internet and book my hotel on the internet, find my way here on the internet, um, I think it's a wonderful thing. But we have created a bit of a headache. So let's talk about uh, a few things like JavaScript. Um, speaking of headaches. So um, looking at some of the data that's, you know, a snapshot of the internet right now, uh, and again, I'm going to quote some, some numbers from the uh, HP Archive Web Malpanac that just came out about a month ago or three weeks, I don't know. Um, at the median, all right, we're shipping 461 kilobytes of JavaScript. All right, kind of like a lot, but fair, cool, whatever. We're able to do a lot of good things with that. Uh, but at the 75th percentile, it jumps to 857, which seems like a bit, almost a meg, really. And that, to me, is a little weird. Um, but I'm going to jump right to it. Let's talk about the unused JS, because we're shipping a lot of resources online, and it's being sent down the wire through the data centers to your device, your phone. So it is being used up, and we are getting some of these emissions through these resources going down the wire. But a lot of it is unused. At P50, 35% of the JavaScript is actually unused. That seems like a little bit of waste. At the 75th percentile, it jumps to 40%. And for the big shocker, at P90, we're shipping a meg of unused JS. Let that sink in for a hot minute. I'm getting back to that document that you know I was reading, which is called um, Who Killed My Battery? JavaScript is one of the most energy consuming components in a web page. So what do we have going on there? We have a meg at P90 going unused. So again, emissions taking place for unused JavaScript. Um, it's killing your battery on your mobile device, and that's even if you have an Apple iPhone, Bruce, 14 or whatever. By the way, I'm on an iPhone 7 still. You know, someone give me a hug. <laughs> and um, so we are talking about best practices, and that's where we come in as, you know, um, fans of web performance. You know, we want to make sure that you understand that web performance also comes down to best practices. And now, obviously, um, anything emissions related is going to come down to best practices. Now, when we're talking about emissions, we're talking about resources. When we're talking about best practices, we're talking about efficiently using the resources and the biggest single use of data images. And I'm talking about, again, best practices. I'm not going to you know, get into this images video conversation. Yes, video can just, boom, eat up a, a lot of your data. But we're going to see how images, very preventable challenges. Now, a snapshot of the web right now. These are the formats and their share of the pie. Now these two, what kills me here about the GIF, soft G once again, folks, I'm sorry, non-negotiable, <laughs> and the PNG. Um, we're looking at 44 loss, 44 percent of lossless formats. I mean, we can get into discussions as to whether or not they should be used, but I personally don't believe that lossless formats belong on the web. Not today, anyways. Not only that, 44% of old lossless format. Nothing worse. Um, the, the GIF is 35 years of age. The PNG is 26 years of age. 
That's why we're talking about formats like WebP and AVIF. And I'm not going to spend all this time about like how amazing they are. But the point I'm trying to make here is this. Well, a few points anyways. Um, the WebP and AVIF are two formats that are essentially were made for the web. The web has matured or the internet has matured so much that we are allowed to have these resources that are meant to live there and nowhere else. The JPEG, hey, great, a foot in and a foot out of the web. PNG, foot in, foot out of the web. GIF, same deal. One of the challenges here, unfortunately, and I think this plays a bit of a part, is the fact that you know, these have sort of created this outrage online. You know, people want to share selfies or whatever, and they try to share these resources offline, and things just don't work. But that's totally fine, and this is my personal opinion, because, again, we're talking about the maturity of the web and why these formats have come about. But they've come about, why? Because we want to make sure we get smaller formats, smaller images. This is going to factor into what we're doing online, and is, they're going to help out in this emissions challenge that we're having. 24% of pages, um, there are only 24% of pages with lazy load attributes on the image tag. So if you do some quick math, that's 76% of pages that could be improved in terms of sending resources and data down the wire. 54, pardon me, 54% of images are not properly sized. We are having a challenge on that level as well. Again, this is data from the um, HP archive and the, the Web Almanac. We're talking about, uh, and I don't say wasteful resources, but best practices that we're trying to employ to make sure that we do not waste data in general. Oh, I didn't realize that the, uh, the, not, the, the red's not coming in. The hottest, I hope you can see this from the back. A million apologies. You know, an image is worth a thousand words. A great image is worth a thousand and one words, my personal belief. Um, but what about the 999 word image? Meaning, you know, do we need to stuff every page with images all the time? You know, can it go without one or two images? Potentially, because we're not managing the image sizes right, we're not lazy loading, maybe we can start to get in some art direction and maybe have a few less images on a page. Now, I'm gonna look at some data from a uh, image CDN, uh, well actually uh, one quick data point from an image CDN called uh, Image Engine. Uh, they've been doing some work and some studies in the uh, emissions and um, sustainability space. And uh, in one month in 2011, uh, they were able to save 243 tons of CO2. And that's in one month. And that equated to 900 barrels of fuel, which was absolutely wild. And they shared this data. Uh, I'll, I'll share a link a little later. Uh, this is part of the, one of the meetups that uh, the meetup I talked about, um, and that was also uh, equated to uh, planting 4,000 plus trees and letting them grow 10 years. And this is an image CDN that does a transformation in real time for you, so they'll give you modern images, and this is what they were seeing online. Now. Uh, in the web performance space, we like to talk about performance budgets. You know, that's a way to sort of, you know, give yourself a cap. You're like, okay, I'm going to use this much JavaScript, this many images. Uh, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z with the rest of my resources. Um, in that presentation that I talked about earlier, to, uh, earlier uh, in my intro, um, Michelle talked about emissions budget, CO2 budgets, that kind of conversation. And at first, it was kind of like, that's kind of weird, but it all makes sense now. Because again, we're talking about best practices. If the idea of you know, a performance budget is like, whatever, I kind of get it. But if I then equate that or sort of create this parallel around the emissions, and if you get that, I'm all with it. You know, 
understanding that the resources are sort of like taxing and saying, you know what, I'm comfortable with this kind of, um, uh, these kind of, uh, this kind of page weight and it's going to create this kind of, you know, uh, CO2 emissions and trying to have an understanding of where you want to create that cap in emissions budget is to me all gravy because we come down again to the idea of best practices that's what we're trying to do as much as possible um, because you know in the web performance space in the last few years I personally think I've seen or we've seen in general some improvements you know people are actually paying a little bit of attention through you know, various applications out there, <coughs> pardon me, they are getting some faster sites, you know, they share their performance uh, scores online, we're seeing that. But unfortunately, what we are seeing as well is the fact that best practices are not being employed. And last I checked, that can get you unemployed. That one's for Dave. <laughs> Michelle in the back, I see you. <laughs> so once again, I come back to the idea that web performance and sustainability are not so distant cousins, and they kind of work hand in hand. And at um, WebHS, we actually have been keeping an eye on things. We have an open issue where we're looking at the opportunity to sort of like surface some of this information, you know because we believe it's actually uh, pretty important. So ultimately, you know, in our sort of, and I'm sorry about the big shock right there, you know, dark to white. Um, so ultimately, we, we do understand that um, in web performance and emissions, or web performance uh, specifically, we're also, we're always trying to create like a good user experience. I mean, that's, that's what web performance is at the end of the day you know, being able to sort of like load some resources and, you know, when you tap, things happen and you don't blow data budgets and stuff like that. So, you know, that has been part of our mantra. But, you know, I'm going to go as far as saying we might be talking about user experience, but the emissions conversation is actually coming down now to like a human experience because we are creating these conditions or emissions are creating these conditions where, you know, uh, non-internet users, non-mobile phone owners are suffering from some of the um, emissions that are taking place. So that being said, um, I hope what you take away from this is the idea that I think we can do a bit of a better job with uh, some of the resources that we're handling online, some of the applications w that we're deploying to the internet. And um, hopefully, you know, from now on and, and, and moving forward that uh, we keep these things in mind because uh, I, myself, I've made some discoveries along the, along the way and uh, this is something I'm certainly not going to forget and I'm going to keep pushing uh, as we keep going. Shout out to Michelle again because I told you last night at the dinner that, you know, that meetup we had was very eye-opening. That being said, merci bien. Thanks for having me, and I'll be around.